Fields of Washington. Number five, the Pacific Northwest tree octopus. Stretching from Northern California to British Columbia, there is an urban legend of a strange, alien-like creature said to live amongst the forest canopy. With a particular concentration in Washington's Olympic National Forest, this small cryptid is said to be a rare arboreal cephalopod, or an octopus that dwells within trees. Some who believe in this creature have tried to get it on the endangered species list, but any attempts have been unsuccessful. According to the story, these diminutive beings are born in water, but live their life on the land and in trees. These creatures are very shy and are said to be very hard to spot. Using a method called tentaculation, these creatures are able to move swiftly from branch to branch. Much like their ocean counterparts, they're able to use camouflage to blend into their surroundings by changing their skin pigments. They're also said to survive on a diet of small animals and birds and are only about 13 inches in length. Does anything eat the tree octopus? Well, the story goes that the biggest predators to these animals are the local Bigfoot, feral cats, and bald eagles. So is the Pacific Northwest tree octopus real? Well, folks, this one was actually proven to be a hoax. The idea was created by someone named Lyle Zapato in 1998. Lyle posted on a message board about this supposed creature. So many people started believing in the story that he even made a website detailing all the aspects of this creature, uh, like its habits, habitat, and its lifestyle. The story of the tree octopus is used today as a classroom exercise to get students to think critically about what they find on the internet, and whether or not it's real or fake. I wanted to include this one for a bit of fun, so let's get on to the next. Number 4. The Lake Chelan Dragon In the deepest lake in Washington state, it's said there is a truly bizarre monster living within its depths. Lake Chelan is a 55 mile long lake located in northern Washington with depths of up to 1,486 feet. Legend has it that there are many underwater caverns within this lake and it potentially has connections with the Pacific Ocean. But that's not all that might be lurking there. Stories of the Lake Chelan Dragon, also known as the Winged Alligator Snake, date back centuries within the legends and folklore of the local Native American tribes. It's said that Lake Chelan is home to a vicious monster with the body of an alligator, the head and eyes of a serpent, coupled with sharp teeth, a long scaly tail, and bat-like wings. Some who know of this legendary creature believe that it could be related to Scotland's Loch Ness Monster. According to one legend, the Native American tribespeople of the area attempted to take out the monster, which was rapidly killing their local food sources like the deer and elk of the area, and it was causing the local tribes to starve. They wound up damming up the lake, hoping that this would kill the beast by cutting off its food supply, but ultimately it survived. In 1892, a written account of an encounter with this monster was published in a local newspaper. A young man was said to be swimming in the lake one day when suddenly a pair of jaws with razor-sharp teeth locked onto his legs. The young man cried to his nearby friends for help. His friends came over and desperately tried to pull him out, but the hungry creature was reluctant to let go of his meal. The man's friends managed to pull him and the monster out of the lake, still attached to his leg and onto the lake shore. The young men attempted to kill this beast with knives, rocks, and sticks, but the story says that it was impossible to harm this underwater horror. It was said that the young man resorted to building a fire and dragging the beast over it. As a result of this final attempt, the creature flapped its wings and took off into the sky, with their friend still in its mouth before diving into the lake with its victim. Whether or not this dragon is real is anyone's guess, but According to some prominent locals, this transmedium cryptid is still at large and can occasionally be seen stalking the lake today. Number 3. Caddy Also known as the Cadborosaurus wilsi, this sea monster is said to live in the waters off the coast of Washington in Cadboro Bay on the Canadian side of the west coast. The serpentine beast is described as having a long body between 40 and 70 feet in length, having grayish-brown skin and donning flippers, saw-like teeth, and hair on its neck, along with a camel-like head. In the past 200 years, witnesses have generated more than 300 reports 
describing sightings and encounters with this aquatic cryptid. Although known in Native American legends for generations and by European colonists from the 1700s on, the first known written report of Caddy happened in 1933 while a lawyer and his wife were cruising on their yacht. Suddenly, they saw an anomalous creature poke its head above the water. What they saw scared them, and they described it as a, quote, horrible serpent with the head of a camel. In 1934, two members of British Columbia's provincial government reported seeing this strange beast. Sightings continued to increase, and later that year, fishermen claimed to have witnessed a pair of the monsters, one 60 feet long and the other about half its size, potentially a juvenile. The first photographic evidence of Caddy was taken in 1937. The photo is unclear, but it seems to show the remains of something. At a whaling station in Vancouver, whalers had just caught a sperm whale and allegedly found among its stomach contents the carcass of an unidentified 20-foot-long creature that had a head resembling something like a horse and having a snake-like body, and it was finned with a spiny tail. After it was removed from the whale, this picture was taken. Unfortunately, the remains are lost to history, and nobody knows exactly what happened to them. And then, in 1939, the closest sighting of a Cadborosaurus was recounted by Captain Paul Sowerby. As his ship was traveling north and about 30 miles offshore, he noticed a strange creature standing four feet out of the water. At first, Sowerby thought it was a polar bear, but the closer the ship got to it, the more he realized it was something else. And whatever it was, it was huge. He described its body, seen under the clear waters, as a column stretching over 40 feet. Reports of these creatures, if there's a population of them that have continued to survive to this day, have been reported as recently as 2009, when an Alaskan fisherman named Kelly Nash spotted a strange beast in the water. Believing it to be Caddy, he managed to get footage of what he was witnessing. Though it's impossible to discern what it actually is in the video, it's very compelling. Some theories believe that whatever is in this video is simply a group of seals or sea lions. So is Caddy real or just a myth? I'll leave that to you to decide. Number two, Bat Squash. First reports of this flying creature began shortly after the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. After this event, locals began claiming to see a purple, ape-like flying creature in the skies around the exploded volcano. This flying fiend seemed to bear a striking resemblance to the crossing of a bat and a sasquatch, and is believed to live in cave systems in the nearby mountains. Similar to the Ahul of Southeast Asia, this nightmare from the sky is said to have yellow eyes, a face that appears to be a combination of a simian and a bat, bluish purple fur, sharp fangs, bird-like feet, and leathery bat wings that some witnesses say can span up to 50 feet. The most notable sightings took place in 1994. The first report came from the Tacoma News Tribune, which stated that a man named Brian Canfield was driving his truck through Pierce County one day. Suddenly, Canfield's engine unexpectedly died, and his truck slowed to a stop in the road. In that moment, he claimed to witness a pair of bird-like clawed feet descending some 30 feet away in front of his truck. He then saw the legs and the torso, and then its head and enormous leathery bat wings. Canfield claimed the figure as being an upwards of nine feet tall, with a coat of blue-tinted fur, tufted ears, sharp teeth, and yellowish eyes. This monster took notice of Canfield and stared him down for what seemed like an eternity before spreading its wings and taking off. Once the creature was gone, Canfield's truck mysteriously started working again, and he sped home. Around the same time, a hiker named Butch Whitaker was preparing for a climb on a local mountain when he spotted a large bat-winged creature fly overhead. Reportedly, Whitaker managed to take a handful of photos before he lost sight of the creature. However, no evidence of these alleged pictures can be found anywhere, causing many to believe this claim to be false. As recently as 2009, reports from Mount Shasta, California spoke of an encounter with a similar large flying creature with leathery wings flying out of a mountain. 
Witnesses claimed its head appeared similar to that of a bat or a fox. And then, in 2011, Bat Squatch appeared one more time to a man using the pseudonym Phoenix Terraz. This man was out walking his dog one day and claimed to see something strange flying in the sky overhead. He described this beast as having blue fur, bat wings, and this time, red glowing eyes. He also described it as looking around 9 feet tall. The man watched this flying terror until it flew out of sight. Some theories purport Bat Squatch is related to Sasquatch, though no direct connections have been made. Others think that there could be an unknown and giant species of North American fruit bat, however, other sightings and missing livestock have been blamed on Bat Squatch attacks, although these claims cannot be proven. Still, other investigators believe similarities with the Chupacabra or Jersey Devil might indicate Bat Squatch being a misidentified cryptid of some other sort. Whatever Bat Squatch is, it certainly defies logic or explanation. If it is real, perhaps continued sightings will shed new light on this mysterious creature. Number 1. Bigfoot While Washington isn't a unique habitat for this alleged 7-9 foot tall North American ape, as the state with the most Bigfoot sightings, it's no surprise that the big guy is taking the number one spot on this top five list. Washington State has over 700 reports of this legendary creature, so let's go. Knowledge of Bigfoot, or Sasquatch, dates back to ancient times in the legends and myths of the Native American tribes of this region. In fact, the wild man being is a common figure in the folklore of much of the Pacific Northwest Native American tribes. These hairy giants go by many names. Some of you may be familiar with them, like Sasquatch, which is an anglophonic corruption of the Halkamelum word Sasquets. Other Salish tribes knew them as Sasahivas, or the Yakima, who called these giant beings Steyama. While the Bigfoot were known for millennia by the indigenous people of the area, it wasn't until 1840 when white settlers were made aware of the Native American legends of this race of giants that lived up in the mountains. In the early 1850s, we have a report from a European settler who made mention of these mysterious creatures. Sometime around 1852, a trader who worked for the Hudson's Bay Company named Rock Duchesne was hunting near Mount St. Helens when one of the ape men beckoned to him. In that moment, he turned and ran until he made it back to his home. Perhaps the most well-known case of a Bigfoot encounter in Washington happened during the 1920s in a gorge along the edge of the Plains of Abraham to the southeast of Mount St. Helens, which became known as Ape Canyon. This historic event was reportedly a violent encounter between a group of miners led by Fred Beck and a group of ape men, first reported by the Oregonian on July 16, 1924. While prospecting for gold, Beck and his team of miners encountered and shot at a creature which we would likely identify as a Bigfoot. They realized this thing that was across the canyon, whatever it was, was covered head to toe in a blackish brown fur and was running bipedally down the canyon to escape. Later in the evening, the cabin these miners stayed in came under siege around midnight by a whole group of these creatures, perhaps angered at the miners' unprovoked attack. These creatures threw rocks at the building all night, and some even climbed up on the roof while others tried to break down the door to the cabin. Beck and his group circled up and fired shot after shot through the roof and through the door of this windowless cabin to ward off the angry beasts. And by daylight, they had all but retreated back to the mountains. The miners left quickly that morning, leaving all their belongings behind. As they fled the area, Beck claimed he could see one of the creatures off in the distance, watching them leave. In the following decades, sightings and signs of these elusive hairy beasts continue to pervade the residents of Washington. In November 1969, however, a set of Bigfoot tracks were discovered in Stevens County, which renewed researchers' interest in proving the existence of this legendary creature. Extensive searches into the area resulted in a collection of over 1,000 casts known as the Bosberg tracks. Interestingly, some of these tracks included a consistent deformity in one of the feet. The left foot measured 17.5 inches long and 6.5 inches across its widest point. 
The right foot, however, was slightly smaller and had two lumps on the outer edge and a twisted or missing toe. A number of anthropologists, such as Dr. Jeff Meldrum, found no evidence that these prints were faked. In 1969, Skamania County, Washington adopted an ordinance to protect Bigfoot by making it illegal to kill one and is punishable by one year in county jail and a $1 million fine. In 1970, then-Washington Governor Dan Evans declared Bigfoot a protected animal and the official state monster. Interestingly, according to one theory, after the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, the National Guard were called in to collect and cover up the bodies of dead Bigfoot which were caught in the forests while the pyroclastic flows were flowing from Mount St. Helens. However, Freedom of Information Act requests have found no evidence of this being documented. To this day, proof of the existence of Bigfoot is inconclusive, despite continuing and compelling eyewitness testimony, video, photos, tracks, and other evidence of these reclusive beings. Do you think Bigfoot is real? Much of the evidence out there seems to indicate that there may indeed be a relict hominid species living somewhere deep within the wilderness of the Pacific Northwest. Time will tell. And that was my list of the top five strange cryptids of Washington. Do you have a favorite out of these five? And were there any other Washington cryptids that I should cover in another video? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, and uh, smash that bell icon for notifications for future videos. Also, a big thank you and shout out to all my patrons for supporting me with the work I'm doing here. And without their help, making awesome content like this wouldn't be possible. If you want to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com forward slash strangeology for more information and check out all the tiers. There's some cool stuff there. And be sure to listen to the Strangeology podcast as well, where I talk about all manner of things strange and unexplained from cryptids, the paranormal, aliens and UFOs, ancient mysteries, and more. You can listen to it pretty much on any podcast platform, or you can listen to it right here on my YouTube channel. You can also find Strangeology on social media, so make sure to give me a follow over on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok to keep up with the day-to-day -day stuff and more awesome content. And that's it for this video, everyone. So until next time, take care of yourselves and each other, and keep it strange. <laughs>